So if you're here because you want to know what makes a good financial advisor, you are in the right place. Hey, it's Matthew Decker. I'm here with my partner, Aaron Vincent. That's me. Uh, we run two separate companies where we focus on financial planning and education. And I thought that this would be a great video because we do about six to 700 kind of new client meetings a year. And we get all kinds of different questions and we see all kinds of different plans. And through that process, we've kind of developed a, I don't know, a loose framework of knowing what makes a good financial advisor. And I would say about 30% of the people that come in and talk to us, you know, we send them away because whoever they're working with is doing a great job. And we just kind of sit, give them a pat on the back and say, Hey, what you got is great. Keep it, keep doing what you're doing. And I'd say about the other two thirds of the people that come in and talk to us and start that conversation fall into one of two camps. Either they don't have a financial advisor currently, uh, or the financial advisor that they have is not maybe doing the best job that they could be doing. And so Aaron and I, if you've watched any of the other kind of interview videos that we've done, we started in this space training financial advisors and insurance agents on really how to kind of do this business the right way. Yep. What are the best practices? You know, how do you go about serving the clients in their best interest? And so I just kind of tasked Aaron here with coming up with some bullet points on, hey, if you had to say what's going to make a good financial advisor, what would you say? Yeah. Well, let's let's first assume that we're talking about a financial advisor. If 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 a a client is considering working with them, then they have the correct training and the correct expertise, or at least enough to make that client feel comfortable. Uh, that kind of goes without saying. So we're just going to assume that's the the starting point. But if we're if we're talking about that category of advisor then I think one of the key characteristics, and I, I list this one first on purpose, is that he or she can speak with an easily understandable language and terminology. Mm. I think if you can't communicate in a way that a client can understand it, you're completely wasting your time anyway. Uh, I think we run in all the time to, you know, we're, we're talking with a, a new client or even someone just kind of shopping for a new advisor and we may ask the question so what's how's it going what's your experience like so far and I, well i don't really know because every other word that my advisor uses i don't understand and i just feel like he or she is just talking over my head in the first place and i think if that's where we're starting from problem number one so you're talking about like industry jargon or yeah. uh, may, maybe coming up with terms that aren't real terms maybe uh, like a good example, uh, a lot of financial advisors will, they'll place a trademark on a phrase and it's a marketing phrase that means something very simple and very right. easy, but they want to seem special. So they, they get their lawyer to, uh, <laughs> to tokenize some kind of marketing phrase that, yeah. that a client might think means something when it doesn't. That's we actually right. see that a lot in the life insurance space. We do. So it can be that, and that's, that's a big one. Or it can be at, at best case scenario, the advisor is just unexperienced or uneducated in, in meeting that client where they're at. Or at worst, they've got this superiority complex that makes them need to feel like they know more than you. Yeah. So they use terms like, well, we, we developed your portfolio based on the price to earnings ratio of these companies. And then we made sure the standard deviation is within this range. And we also provided you with a... Uh, a uh, an alternative commodity structured note. Does that sound good to you, Mr. Client? And and you're like, I hired you to help me make decisions. I don't know what you're saying. You, you've already lost the game. Yep, I would totally agree. Uh, if I were to boil that down, I would say a good financial advisor is going to make complicated things simple and easily digestible for you. That's right. The, a good financial advisor finds a way to be an advocate for their client, yep. bridging the gap between all these decisions and options and, and all the different opportunities that are out there and, and helping boil those down and educate the client on what their options are and communicating them clearly. And that's number one for me. Also on the, on the same lines of communication, but it's, it's communicating pros and cons totally, completely. There's no, perfect investment, right? Well, There's, what if there are no cons? <laughs> that doesn't exist. Oh. And that's the danger. If there are no cons, see point number one. Okay. <laughs> um, everything has opportunities and, and every, you know, a, a strength is, is a weakness. Uh, and so 
if you want a big return, you got to take big risk. Well, inherently, that's a pro and a con. And so that's just an example. But I think telling the whole story, not just, I think often advisors kind of get this uh, preconceived idea or the decision in their own mind of what they think their client should do, which, which is good. That's not a problem. But um, to communicate the entire story mm -hmm. well is, is key. Why do you think some advisors don't communicate the whole story yeah. or don't give good pros and cons? That's the question. That's a good question. I think, again, benefit of the doubt to start off with. Let's, let's assume good intent. I think they don't because it takes a lot of work. It just takes a lot of effort to, to research and yeah. to consider all options. And, and that's number one. And then if we go on the other side of the, of the coin, you know, a lot of advisors out there don't have good intent and they can kind of bully somebody into the option that's the best thing for the advisor, not necessarily the client. And or the easiest thing. Or the easiest for the one advisor. to do. That's right. Yeah. I would also say there's a lot of advisors out there that they don't have access to all the information yeah. or all the products or they're not licensed in all the areas. And so if they give you all the pros and cons, you might end up choosing something that they can't help you with. Right. And you know, that's not yeah. in their best interest. So right. why do that? And on that note too, it may even be like, well, I, the advisor, uh, I know this option might be relevant, but I don't understand it myself. And so rather than me going to understand it, educate myself, possibly even get licensed to inform my clients about it, I'll just skip that one. Yeah. Not a good idea. What else? Uh, I got, they begin with the end in mind. Uh, just a fancy way of saying set goals. So, you know, we talk about this all the time in the financial planning process, whether it's an insurance product or an other kind of investment, what is your goal? What are we trying to accomplish? Mm -hmm. And knowing what the end goal is, maybe it's a, uh, a certain amount of money to get to or a certain return we need to hit or tax, you know, opportunities and things like whatever it might be, what's the end goal and then back into the solutions yep. rather than leading with products and things and yep. hoping that we end up where we want to be. Yep. I'm going to turn this I'm going to turn this on the audience. I love you guys. I love you to death. You've made this channel awesome and we have a lot of fun doing this, but I'm just going to be real with you for a second. If you don't have a target that you want a financial advisor to hit on your behalf, it doesn't matter how good the financial advisor is. What are they aiming at? Yep. If they don't know what they're aiming at, they can't hit it. And I would say that if your advisor isn't initiating, asking you questions to find that, yeah, you can already find a better one probably. We have a lot of these conversations where, you know, someone sees our videos, they're like, oh, those guys look like respectable men who are trying to do what's right for the clients. Yeah, let me let me see what that's all about. And then, you know, we have an initial conversation. We, we send out a fact finder and, and we ask some questions. Then we get together and we go through those questions. And the whole goal for us of that process is to figure out what the client's goals might be. And so a lot of times we'll have people come to us and, you know, they'll send us their statements. They'll send us uh, how much they make and how much they've saved and where their savings are. And they'll tell us about their kids and they'll send us their mortgage statement. Mm -hmm. And we know that they've got an umbrella policy and a life insurance policy. And we literally have more information on them than I think I probably have on, you know, my closest family members. Right. right? Yeah. Uh, but what they leave blank are the questions that we actually need to know, which is like, hey, how much do you want to make in retirement? Yeah. What What is your retirement gonna look like? Nothing. When do you want to retire? When do you wanna retire? <laughs> and usually the answer is, I don't know, when can I? You tell me. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah. we get that a lot. Well, you yeah. tell me, I was hoping you would tell me when I could. Yeah, tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and while we can do that, that's just not the way to do it no. because it's your plan. It's your goals and you got to have them. And if you have them, man, we, we will go to bat for you to hit those goals, but you got to come in and, and have done a little bit of the work on the front end to, to figure out what's important to you. You know, yeah. what's your lifestyle going to look like? So you got to have goals and you having goals allows a good financial advisor to begin with the end in mind. Exactly right. Yeah. The end being your goals and then start from the beginning. Anything else? I think another one that's that's big for, for me and we again see this all the time is a good financial advisor will provide more than one option when possible. You know, we can use an example of accumulating cash value in a in a life insurance policy. Well, there are different ways to do that. We may have our opinions on which type of product is better, index universal life, whole life, and, and have our opinions. And we may have our 
uh, even, even data behind those things, but it's really what suits the client's needs better. And so if you come to me and say, Hey, I've done research, you know, you're my prospective client. I've done some research. I want to talk about building cash value, my life insurance policy. I found this YouTube video by Matt Decker on, on YouTube and it was phenomenal. It made me realize I want this. Well, it, if I say, perfect, here's the product that you want and here's how to fund it, sign here and we're done. Um, that may or may not be your best interest in mind. That might be, hey, there are two or maybe even three options here. Let's consider them uh, and, and educate you on all those. So, so providing more than one opportunity or one option to solve that problem or to reach that goal that we're talking about when possible. Yeah, if you're a consumer and you're looking for a good financial advisor and you're never getting multiple options, that's a major red flag. If you're a financial professional and you're used to only showing one option, we'll talk to you in a little bit. We can help you with that. You shouldn't be doing that, by the way. Let us help you with that. If a financial advisor is doing these, what do we talk about, four or five things? If they're doing these things, then uh, the ones that come after these are probably coming naturally. If they're not doing these things, then that may be a red flag of what else is not happening. I think that's a great way to put it. If you are a financial advisor, uh, or if you're an insurance agent and you wanna broaden your horizon, maybe expand your influence, we can help you with that. You should go to our website. It's leveragedwm.com. Up at the top where the menu is, uh, you can see all our little sub pages. You should go to the contact us page and just fill out a little form. Tell us that you're a financial advisor, financial professional, insurance agent. You're looking to maybe expand what you're doing. You're looking to learn about, you know, what's the best way to show multiple options? How can you best serve your clients? Send us a note, we'll reach out to you. We'd love to help you out. If you're a consumer and you're looking for a good financial advisor, I think these are some great bullet points here for you to be able to know, hey, is the person that I'm working with, is the person that I'm interviewing, do they have my best interest in mind? Or do they have their own interest in mind? Uh, and if you'd like to work with us, you can do the same thing, actually. You can go to our website, leveragedwm.com. You can go to the Contact Us page, or you can go straight to the Book a Meeting page. And you can book a quick 15 to 30 minute discovery call where you'll talk with someone on the team. Uh, it could be me, could be Aaron, uh, could be Brady, could be Craig, and we'll just chat with you. Figure out if you've got a clear picture on your goals. And if you do have a clear picture on your goals and you wanna work with some people who love helping people, I think you'll find that this is a great place to do that. Yep. Until next time, take care.